Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today I've got another gear review for you. From high-end rods, to budget reels, hooks, to soft baits, this will be a good one. Let's go. This is our first gear review of the new year, and I am so excited. You guys know, if you've been around Tactical for any length of time, that Tim and I are both fanatical about Tackle. We love rods and reels, from high-end to budget. We love playing with terminal tackle, different kinds of baits, swim baits, crank baits, soft baits, it doesn't matter. We are tackle junkies. And in the sport of bass fishing, it's very easy to spend a lot of money in pursuit of decent gear that consistently catches fish. Uh, you can waste a lot. So we take our inner tackle junkies and we constantly try new gear. We're buying just about everything at least everything that interests us that hits the market and we're constantly testing rods reels baits just trying to find those gems those items that stick out that might help you catch more fish that are a better match to an existing bait increased sensitivity better bang for the buck and we roll all that up, and today I've got a bunch of those items for you, and I'm so excited to jump into this. With that, let's just start right here. I've already got it in my hands. Mega Bass P5s. They have now brought back a lot of the American-oriented actions, those US-oriented actions. So we had the destroyer and then we had the JDM P5s come over and the destroyers went away for a time. Now a lot of those familiar destroyer actions are back in that P5 line and I'm so pumped about it. Like this is the 110 special. I've already put a ton of time on this rod. The FMJ, another one that I just love. Uh, I love what they've done with the new rods. I have beat them to death just as fast as I could to try and get a feel for it, to see what's changed, how similar are they, and they're really, really good. Uh, you know, the 110 Special, to me, that was the first one I grabbed, because I I just have this special place in my heart for jerkbaits. I love throwing a jerkbait, plus it's winter time, so I'm naturally throwing a jerkbait. So I immediately jumped on the 110 Special first and just started putting it through the paces, and. The ratings on the rod are identical, but in my hand, what I felt on the water, I feel like the blank acts like it's almost like it's a half a power lighter. Like it's just a little bit more forgiving as I'm loading up on those fish. And I think that's a really positive thing. I really like that one. Um, again, that FMJ is a total standout for me. If I could only grab one in that P5 line of the, of the US actions coming back into the P5 line, if I could grab just one, it would probably be an FMJ because it's such a universal rod. Like the actual ratings, you're looking at three eighths to one ounce, 10 to 25 pound line, seven foot three long. It's just as universal as you can get. You can do so many different things on that one model. The, another one that stood out for me. So when the Destroyer went away, the Mark 48 went away. They did not bring back the Mark 48, but they brought back an interesting rod called the Mark 56. And I really like that one. Uh, I already stuck some Magdraft fish on it and I was very, very pleasantly surprised by that rod. I like it a lot. So again, just a first look at those US actions coming into that P5 line, but it's really good to see those. And I'm sure a bunch of you guys, a bunch of the Mega Bass fans are really pumped to see those familiar models returning to the US market. Uh, next up, let's do the other reel and then we'll just jump into baits, hooks, etc. The other reel is this guy right here. Shimano SLX. The Shimano SLX, you might have heard a couple weeks ago that there was a new SLX. So I worked really hard to get my hands on one and I got my hands on one, exactly one. The only thing when you, so this is the original SLX, this is the new SLX A. When you look at them side by side, 
They're basically identical. The only thing that changed, I say basically, they literally are identical. The only thing that changed is the color of the graphics. That's how you can tell the difference between the SLX and the SLX-A. Now, the difference is on the inside. Let me jump to the punchline. Here's the best part. The price didn't change. So $99 reel stayed a $99 reel, but they improved it. What they did, outside they changed the color. That's nothing. Inside, they added silent tune. So what that's done is it has taken the SLX that you're familiar with, which is an amazing reel for 99 bucks. You can do basically anything with it. They added silent tune, which has made it smoother and quieter. And it really is like, it's noticeably, well, I put a piece of tape on it because all you're gonna hear as I spin it is my fluoro rubbing. So I had taped that fluoro so you could actually hear the spool, but it came flying off. Let me see if I can tape it on there again so that you can actually get a good reflection of the reel itself. Because it, you can tell the difference instantly between the old and the new. I was very surprised how noticeable to my ear the difference was. It's so cold out here, my tape doesn't want to stick. I don't know if you can hear it at all, but it is. Oh, that tape popped off again. Darn it, well, we heard it one time anyway, but it's a much quieter, much smoother reel. And it is, it's actually noticeable in the hand. And again, that's an improvement with no increase in price. So no downside, total upside. Was very pleased to see that come to market. All right, uh, let's just jump right into it. I'm just gonna work my way across here. We've got everything from giant baits to hooks. First one up is a hook. BKK. BKK is a very large company that has just like begun to dabble in the bass fishing world, it seems, but I think they're here to stay. And they, when they first landed, I don't know, a year or two ago, they had some swim bait hooks that really interested me. So I started playing with them and this is the Titan Diver. Okay, so this is going to be a weedless swim bait hook. What I like about it is it comes in a huge range of sizes. I mean, the shape is a familiar overall shape, right? It's a wide gap swim bait hook. So taking a 3.8 Kitek on that one or a 4.3 Kitek and fishing it in heavy cover. Um, but they do some things that I really like that are different. So it's very easy to get the blade on and off. And then they add this little keeper. So you slide this down thread your bait on, get it all positioned, and then you slide that up and stick it against the belly of that bait. And that kind of locks it in place. And I really like that. It's just a very well thought out hook. It's got this huge gap. And as a result, when that thing collapses, you've really got some bite out of that hook. I think that Titan Diver is a really good option. And then again, the biggest deal with it is that they offer it in a bunch of different sizes and weights. And I think that is really cool. And that was needed in the market because we don't all just throw a 4.8 Kitek, right? You might throw, you might throw a 4.3, a 3.8, a 3.3, a 2.8, or you might throw a big one and you need different hooks. So that's really cool. Now from there, they have the Titan Diver Plus. And that's this one. And then it comes with extra hook, weight, extra stoppers, all the things. So conceptually, now granted these are two different sizes, but conceptually the same deal, okay? Same basic hook, but when you switch from the Diver to the Diver Plus, everything becomes adjustable. So you've still got this guy on here that you can slide up and down, but the weight itself can be moved or removed. So I can take this and I can position it forward. I can literally just slide it up my hook shank, right? If I want to be obviously not weight that far forward, but weight forward versus weight back. The time that I will do that is if I'm trying to fish deeper, I go weight forward. If I'm trying to fish flatter, if I'm fishing right over the top of shallow grass, 
I'll push that guy weight back. And then also you can take these stoppers. Again, this is the plus. You can take the stoppers, pull them out completely and take that weight off. So you can interchange size of weights, whether or not it has a blade, as well as positioning on the shank of the hook. All really neat options and it's very simple to do. I mean, it's a very user friendly setup. So two very unique hooks, a very stout, very strong hook, unique deep gap there um, and some really, really cool features that I'm very impressed with. So again, that's the BKK Titan and the Titan Plus. All right, next up is going to be weights. This is from Gamakatsu. The Gamakatsu G-Shield. So Gamakatsu started doing tungsten. Who hasn't started doing tungsten at this point, right? But what caught my eye instantly was the shape of the tungsten. Now they came out with like three or four different shapes, punching weights, different things. But this is the one that immediately jumped out to me. This is their worm weight. Let me pull one out of the pack so you can see. Now to the, to the end consumer, this wouldn't immediately mean something to you. This meant everything to me. So Gamakatsu came out with a different shape of weight. 95% of tungsten on the market comes in like two basic shapes. There's a flipping shape and a worm shape. From there, the only thing that sets them apart is the coating. What color do you paint them or how do you treat them? Like we use a ton of swagger tungsten because it's treated and it has this amazing coating that doesn't chip as a result. They call it their Vader tungsten. That's why we use that tungsten so much, but it's still a familiar shape. When I saw this, this was completely different. So Gamakatsu in this worm weight, one, it's got an insert in it, okay? But on the back side, the insert has a bunch of room inside it. It's really open and it's a hard insert. It's so it can slip completely over your knot and it can be up inside there. The reason why this jumped out at me was because when Tungsten first came out, there was a company called uh, Penetrator Weights. I swore by those things. I mean, I swore by them and that company went away, I have no idea how long ago, a long time ago. And I hadn't seen a shape like it since, but this one spoke to me. Here's the deal. That weight perfectly completes, like this is a three eighths. This is a four inch pack of craw, a bait I throw a lot. That's a three eighths ounce sitting on top of that bait. It really completes it. Let me open up a three sixteenths because one of my favorite things to do is to Texas rig with really lightweight. I throw three sixteenths a lot with like 10 to 12 pound line and a three aught wide gap hook. And I'm able to get into places with that light line and catch these fish that wouldn't eat on heavier line. It's just a really clean presentation. And then as long as I don't horse them, I almost always get them out even at a heavy cover. So I really like doing that with a 316. So here is that 316, that smaller run. Look how well that pairs up to the end of that craw. You see what I'm saying? It just completes the profile and it's sitting over the top of your knot. So it truly is sitting right down on that bait. For a worm, that narrower profile is a better match and a fit for like really thin worms, but for thicker worms, for like seven, nine, 11 inch worms, or for craws and creatures, this profile, which again, to me is reminiscent of this old brand that's been gone forever, this profile just, speaks to me. The weight is stamped on them, uh, got a really good finish on them. They're just awesome. I mean, it's it speaks to me. I'm sure it speaks to some of you, but finishing that profile, completing the look of that bait is a small thing, but it's not a small thing. It literally makes you look different than every other bait that comes along. And that is a big deal. All right, one more hook, and then we're going to jump into baits and colors. 
This one is from owner. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We got BKK, Gamakatsu, and owner all sitting here together. So owner, they do a lot of dressed treble hooks. And what I mean is like feathered treble hooks. Well, now they have this guy, the dress treble. Let me pull one out. And they've got it in a bunch of sizes. But it's built on the ST36, which is a very good 1X hook. But instead of being the feathered treble, this is a bucktail. So a little bit more durable. If you're fishing like walking baits, it's perfect for that. When I fish a popper, I really like feathers because it's that slow movement and those feathers are just sort of fan out on the water. But when you're fishing faster baits and it doesn't have time to really lay out and fan out, you just want overall profile, bucktail is a way better deal because it's more durable, it lasts a lot longer, um, and it just generally takes more abuse. So again, that's that dress treble built around that ST36, just a more durable option. And they make it all the way down, like that's a size six. So they make it for the little guys. I'm really happy to see those. Let me stick this one back in here so I don't end up with it in the back of my hand halfway through this thing. Okay, now we're into the baits. Let's start with the crankbait. This is a cool one. Freedom Tackle Ultra Diver. This is the bigger one. This is the smaller one. Great sizes. If you've bass fished for a long time, you just immediately locked onto the same thing I locked on. If you're newer to bass fishing, you have no idea. There was a bait way back called the Lure Jensen Hot Lips. That bait, again, discontinued, long since gone, just like that tungsten I was talking about. The Hot Lips was an awesome, awesome crankbait. Sometimes it's just the wrong timing. Well, it's very obvious to me that the Ultra Diver pays homage to that. It's not exactly the same bait, but that bill, I mean, look at that bill and tell me you can't see it, right? Tell me you can't see a Hot Lips. But this is a completely different bait. So very similar, but some key features. That line tie is tied back into the bait. It's stronger. The actual contour of the lip is different. And then sizing is a little bit different. So this one is a little bit larger than the old small. And this one, you know, I actually don't know if it's just a touch bigger. The big one might be right there. But these are baits. What makes them special is that crazy looking lip. They have an amazing dive angle. The small hot lips when I was a kid in a very similar red color to this, it was a red chrome color, was was the bread and butter for us. My brother and I had so much confidence in that bait. If we were in a tournament and we needed a bite, we knew we could get it on that. And that I instantly felt that here too with this guy. Um, this size, this profile is very unique because it's a small bait with an incredibly steep dive angle. What that means is you get deeper sooner. If you're using budget gear and you can't cast as far, you still get deep. If you're using good gear and you can send it, you get super deep, but it's a small profile that gets really deep really quickly. And it is a shape that gets bit and it comes in some really, really cool colors. Again, the red, I mean, the moment I saw it, I had to have it. This, this is so similar to a bait that I caught so many fish on as a kid. And then that's another just deadly, deadly craw color, but they've got some great minnow colors as well. But there's the two sizes side by side. Really a neat bait with a little bit of bass fishing throwback, as well as some new technology, a really good sound and a really good swim. That's a cool one. Uh, the next one, Kitek. Not a new bait. Who doesn't throw a Kitek, right? The Kitek Fat Swing Impact is one of those staple baseline baits that other things are judged by. So why did I just grab a 3.3, a 3.8, and a 4.8? Because if you haven't looked lately, Kitek just launched a bunch 
of new colors. I just ordered such a giant, I should have brought my box. I might've sunk the boat though. I ordered so many Kitex because I go through a lot of them. You need every size, or at least I do. I need 4.8 for fishing uh, on a flashy swimmer in grass. I need a 4.3 for the back of my spinnerbait. I need a 3.8 for our mini flex rig. I need 3.3s and 2.8s for slow crawling, right? I have a job for every one of those sizes. But these were three new colors that really have stood out for me. So I grabbed those, but there's a bunch of new colors you should look at. Uh, but the first one is Threadfin Shad. Let me open it up. This thing in the water, here in my hand, I mean, you're not going to be able to see it, but in the water, it looks so much like a Threadfin. It's crazy. It's like a iridescent green back with a fine blue flake and a larger gold flake. And then the body is more of a pearl white with silver flake in it. But again, in the water, it looks like a thread fin. It looks very, very good. Another one, that guy there is called Bass Candy. That one spoke to me for fishing up north. It might speak to you for something else, but it's more of a greenish gold back fading to a pearl belly, but that pearl belly has that red pearlescence in it. And then you got some purple and gold flake in the back. Bass candy looks like a, a Northern Slayer to me. And then the last one, I'm super excited about this one. This is the original Sexy Shad. So if you were throwing Sexy Shad when Kitek came out, a bunch of the colors actually just all of a sudden had some different flake in them. They just changed the colors midstream. And I, I have no idea why. I have no inside line at Kitek. I mean, I, I buy them off Tackle Warehouse just like everybody else. I have no clue why they changed them, but they did. But all of a sudden, the original Sexy Shad is back and it looks just as good as it ever did. So of course I had to buy a mountain of those two. But the point is there are a bunch of new Kitek colors that are worth taking a look at. All right, next one. I'm just gonna cut this one out of the package just to make our lives easier here. Get that ripped. All these poor guys, come on. There we go. All right. Hog Hunter swim baits. Wedge tail style bait. Think wintertime trout imitator. It's a bait that has crushed so many big ones in California and around the country. But Tackle Warehouse, who just started carrying them, has them in a couple amazing colors, including what do they call this one? TW Gizzard Chad. I had to have it. Had to have it. We've got a lot of Gizzard Chad here on the TVA system. You've got a lot of gizzard shad all over the south on a lot of key swim bait fisheries. And it's awesome to have a great profile, great swimming bait in a true gizzard shad color that can be slow crawled in the winter time, as well as fished faster as we're transitioning into the pre-spawn. The hog hunter is a pricey bait. This is a high end swim bait, uh, but it's a great bait in a killer color. So I wanted to make you aware of those if you didn't know that those were now on Tackle Warehouse. Uh, one other swim bait and then we'll end with this missile baits. The G-Rat Sneaky Pete. I grabbed these because of, again, new colors. Let me pull them out. So we throw the Sneaky Pete a lot. Absolutely one of our favorite glide baits. Fish is incredibly well around cover. Uh, it's got a fairly moderate sink to it, a lot of sound. It's a very reactive, very aggressive bait that we do really well on. They've added some killer colors. So that is light trout. You guys know how much Tim and I like light trout. That's no secret. Uh, been throwing light trout in the S waiver forever. They've now added that sort of a color profile to the Sneaky, which is a killer option. And then they've got two other colors here and I always confuse which one's which, so I'm actually gonna read them to you. But this is a Sneaky Pete. This is the smaller guy, this is the Pistol Pete. And you can get that in all the colors as well. Uh, I throw the Pistol Pete a lot when I'm chasing smallmouth. I just like that smaller, super darty, super aggressive profile. Uh, but they 
paired up with Clay Guida to do these two colors. Of all people, Clay is a fishing fanatic, loves saltwater fishing, loves bass fishing, super nice guy. Uh, and they all paired up together and designed these two colors. So this one is the Citrus Shad. This one is Guida's Sexy Shad. So let's look at Citrus Shad first. Both of his colors have got some chartreuse in them, which I love throwing chartreuse. That one looks so good, so good. And then in the, the other one, in Guida Sexy Shad, again, I grabbed the Pistol Pete, the smaller one. Looks good. And I'll give you a size comparison here on these two baits. Side by side, this is a Pistol, this is a Sneaky. So you have a size reference. I mean, this is a really good smallmouth spotted bass smaller largemouth type bait versus the larger full size sneaky. And then of course they have a big one too, the Papa Pete, but these are the fishiest sizes for most people. All right, last but definitely not least, I'm super excited about these. You guys know how much I love the Spunk Shad. The Spunk Shad is my personal favorite all around chatterbait trailer. That's the bait that I throw on the chatterbait most often because it allows the baits to cut and dart and move in ways that most trailers won't. Uh, it really improves the overall action of a chatterbait. It actually adds something to it. So I love that bait. Hog Farmer makes the Spunk Shad and they make it in a bunch of awesome colors. Well, Hog Farmer has now licensed the Spunk Shad to missile bait. So they've got something going between them and now missile baits also has the spunk shad in the 4.5 and the 5.5, my two favorite sizes. And they did it in some of their custom colors. So I grabbed four of my favorites because I couldn't just pick one out to show you, okay? Uh, but I'm really, really thrilled with them. Like here, this one, what do they call it? This is Green Pumpkin Delight. You think that's supposed to pair up to some bee height delight? Green pumpkin, chartreuse, a little bit of clear pearl essence. <laughs> it looks good. And then this one, which they call frosted purple, which is just a straight up clear pearl, but it's got that purple powder to it or that purple haze rolling around on it. Just a super subtle, but very bold in the water with that purple flash. Really a great color that'll pair to all sorts of things. Two more. I'm gonna end on my actual favorite. This one is Gobi Bite. This one is like a half green pumpkin, half pro blue. And then it's got that, almost like that electric shad purple flake in it. Just a crazy good color. I say that without even getting to my actual favorite one yet. Last but not least is Bruiser Flash. I love fishing black and blue when I want a big bite. I tend to get less bites on black and blue, but they're the key bites. Bruiser Flash is a half black and then half bright blue. And then it's got that silver fine flake in it. They look good, really, really good. All of these colors look awesome. So again, it's the same Spunk Shad that I've been preaching about for years. I absolutely love it. But these are coming from Missile instead of from Hog Farmer, but it's still the Hog Farmer Spunk Shad and then just a bunch of awesome new, miss well, they're missile colors. So new to a spunk shad, um, just proven fish catching colors. Whew, guys, I love doing this. I know you guys enjoy it too, because Tim and I go out there, we do the research, we put in the time and the money and we find the gems. Uh, we get so much positive feedback from you guys when we do these videos. And again, it's just a bonus because we get to let our tackle junkies just run wild all the time, constantly placing orders. I, ch I refresh 
Tackle Warehouse and the new items, the featured new items page, plus I go to the new item categories and go category by category almost every day. It's disgusting. I love Tackle. Guys, in the video description, I will link every single one of these items in the order that they appeared so that they're very easy to find. Uh, if it's a sizing thing, I'll give you my favorite size. If it's a color thing, I'll give you my favorite color. So the rod, I'll give you a couple of my favorite, my personal favorite models. Maybe a couple favorite casting and a favorite spinning or something like that. But again, a bunch of really good options that are worth taking a look at as we head towards spring. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.